Today, I'm going to be dealing with how to deal with anxiety. So if you're someone who wants to understand how to deal with worry and anxiety from God's word, then my message today is just for you. I will cover a couple points about how to deal with this topic. First, I'm going to explain what anxiety and worry are, and then I'm going to explain how to deal with it. Anxiety is a feeling of worry and nervousness or unease. It typically comes about when you're expecting a negative event to happen. All right. And I also want to make it very, very clear that because this message is really set up for someone who wants to learn how to deal with this, this issue from God's word. So I want to make, make it very, very clear that to the Christian, one who wants to grow in his or her faith, you, you, you must ensure that you don't accept anxiety or worry as normal. These are not normal for a child, a child of God, a Christian. All right. So I want to, be, to establish a very important point as we as I explain how to deal with this issue. First of all, you must settle in your heart that for you as a child of God, worry and anxiety should not be considered as normal. The day you got born again, you received a new kind of life, the life of God, and you were born into a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is governed by the life of faith because God is a God of faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 6 that anyone who comes to God must believe that he is and that, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God is always pleased with faith because it's, it's a life of faith that enables you to receive from God, all right? So I made a very important first point that you must not tolerate fear, worry, or anxiety as normal, all right? And the reason why I said that is that whatever you accommodate, you're gonna tolerate, right? And whatever you tolerate, you will not um, catch when it happens to stop to stop it or prevent it all right all right here's what the key points covered so far first anxiety is an expectation that something negative will happen second anxiety and worry will hinder you from receiving from God now can you share some reasons why people get anxious please share your comments in the comment section below So why should you never accommodate fear? Just the same way that God needs faith in your heart for him to accomplish anything in your life, the devil also needs you to believe his lies. The devil needs you to be anxious or worried or fear for him to be able to work in your life. Because the fate, right? The negative end of fate is believing something negative is gonna to happen to you. The positive end of faith is for you to believe what God's word says. So the reason why I made the very important first point that you should never tolerate or accommodate anxiousness or worry or fear, because these are open doors to the enemy. And worry or fear or doubt are anticipation of, of the negative. And whenever you expect anything negative, you open the door to the devil. That's why it's a very important first important point that I wanted to establish, all right? Expectation always attracts. So you wanna be very watchful what you, um, you expect, positive or negative. All right, and I, and I also want you to un understand that, um, that the Bible lets us know that God wants us to always believe him, right? The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse six that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The one that comes to God must believe that he is. You must believe everything that God says about you, about him in his word, all right? And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anytime you notice fear or worry or doubt in a particular area, you must now open God's word to find out what God says about that area. For example, if you notice that you're getting anxious about your relationship, right? Then you need to go into God's word 
and find out what God says about your relationships. There's so many verses and scriptures to encourage you, to, um, to, uh, to instruct you and guide you to not be afraid. So there are verses of scripture that tells you not to worry, not to be afraid, not to be in doubt, because God always watches over the ones that trust in Him. So if you're worried about, let's say, your finances, instead of being worried or afraid, find out what God's word says about your finances. So in any area where you notice anxiety, worry, or doubt, whether it's you being anxious about your relationships or your finances, find out what God's word says about that area. Here's all the key points covered so far. First, don't accommodate anxiety or worry. When you're anxious, you open the door for the devil's evil works. Second, expectations, negative or positive, will attract what you are expecting. Question, can you share how to deal with anxious thoughts? Please share your comments in the comment section below. So tonight I'm going to actually share a story from God's Word to encourage you. Tonight I'm going to share a story of our three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right, so I'm going to share this story from the Bible. So I do believe that this story is going to build your faith, right, to be, uh, to be assured of God's protection, to be assured of God's love, and to be assured that you can always count on God to always be there for you, no matter what. And the story about uh, the three Hebrew boys comes from Daniel chapter three. The Bible tells me that uh, tell, tells us that these three Hebrew boys were faced with a challenge, right? And that the king gave a decree. And the king gave a decree that he had uh, uh, erected or he, he got uh, a graven image to be created, right? And then the king gave a decree that everyone would have to bow down to worship this graven image. And the Bible says that the three Hebrew boys refused to bow because they honored God and they refused to bow down to the king's graven image. Well, the word got to the king because a, a certain number of men in the king's palace, right? Were, were jealous of the three Hebrew boys. They were jealous because the three Hebrew boys who had been promoted. And I'm gonna read the story now to tell you what happened to the three Hebrew boys. Daniel chapter three, verse 12. There are certain Jews who, who thou hast set over the, the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Ne then, then Nebuchadnezzar spoke up and said unto them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? This is uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 14. Then uh, Nebuchadnezzar spoke and then said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, do, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. Now, the king now says, If ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the sal the psaltery and the dull dull simmer and all kinds of music, ye 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 fall down and worship the image which which I have made. Well, if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a fiery furnace. And who is that God that that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered, and they said, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Hebrew boys were bold to stand against uh, the king because they refused to bow down to the king's graven image. This is now what, what they said. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the, the, from the burning fire furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hands, O king. This verse is so pivotal because when the king now threatens to throw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego into the fiery furnace, 
These boys had a choice to be afraid or to worry or to be in faith. Instead of being afraid, they chose to trust God. And I want, I, want, I want you to know that no story in the Bible is fictional. This is a, is a true story. These boys are not anxious. These three boys are not worried, but instead they chose to trust God. And why is this story pivotal to my topic tonight? Anytime you have a temptation to worry or to be fearful or doubt, you must remember that God is with you. You must remember that God loves you. You must remember that you're not alone. As a child of God, you must put your faith in God. As a one who, who, who has come to know God, you must put your trust and confidence in God. Because just like these three Hebrew boys had a choice, they had a choice. They were faced with a, 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 a challenge. Right, and it cannot get as challenging as being as being threatened to be thrown into a fire furnace. And you know, the fire furnace could be you can relate that to any challenge you face in everyday life, because the truth is, everyday life you may run into any type of challenge. To so these three Hebrew boys, it was a fire furnace, and they refused to buck down in the face of the challenge. And this is what these three Hebrew boys said. And they said to the king in Daniel chapter 3, verse 17, If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hands, O king. So they refused to worship, bow down to worship the graven image. And this is what the king now says in Daniel chapter 3, verse 19, he asked for the fiery furnace to be turned up seven times. He was that angry and it, he now commands his, his, his servant to turn up the fiery furnace seven times. And you know what? Never in this story do you see the, the three Hebrew boys changing their mind to now um, remember the king now said to them, if they are willing to bow, they would not be thrown down, thrown into the fire furnace. Even when the king now gets angry and commands his servants to turn up the fire furnace seven times hotter, you never see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego changing their mind to now be willing to bow down to the graven image. They maintain, they maintain their stance not to bow because they, they had confidence in God. And I want you to understand that you can trust God. When you have the temptation to be worried or fearful about anything, instead of accepting the anxious thoughts, choose to trust God. You can always trust God, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. In Daniel chapter three, verse 21, this is now what, what, ha what happens. The three boys, are now, are now bound, they're tied, they're tied, their hands are tied, and they're thrown into the fire furnace. And in Daniel chapter three, verse 21, the, the Bible says that then these boys bound in their coats, their, their hosen, their hats, and their garments were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. But the king, Nebuchadnezzar, is amazed to find out that these three boys thrown into the fire furnace were not burned, they were not harmed. This is now what happens. In Daniel chapter three, verse, tw verse 25, he now says, the king now says, lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they're, and they're not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. I'm gonna re repeat this verse again. The king now says, lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they, and, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Remember the king had the, the three Hebrew boys tied up, right? And bound up and they were thrown into the fire furnace. But in the fire furnace, Bible lets us know that they were loose and they were not tied, tied up. It lets you know that in the midst of the fire, in the midst of your trouble, that God is gonna vindicate you and deliver you. And we see this story that in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the face of danger, the Lord delivered Dan, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible lets us see that in the story that 
The fourth man, right? The fourth man is, is like the son of God, which is the Lord Jesus. And we, I want you to understand that in the midst of the fire, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of danger, the Lord was present. Here's some of the key points covered so far. First, you must remember that challenges may sometimes come, but refuse to worry or be anxious in the face of any challenge. Second, just like the three Hebrew boys, trust and depend on God in the midst of every challenge. Here's a question for you. Can you share some practical ways to trust God during challenging times? Please share your answer in the comment section below. Anxiety of worry is the anticipation, is the expectation of something negative or evil. The same way with faith. Faith is believing what God's word says. I want to share just a few verses as I wrap up my teaching tonight. Remember I said not to be anxious, not to worry. And let me just tell, tell you a few verses that tell you why you should not be worried. In Jeremiah 17, verse 7, Jeremiah 17, verse 7, and I just love this verse. It says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. And I'll also read Psalm 20, verse 7. I love this verse as, as well. This verse says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. And this one verse comes, it comes from 1 John 4, verse 18. 1 John 4, verse 18. This verse says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Why is this verse so important? This verse says that the one who trusts in the love of God will not be afraid. So how do you deal with anxious thoughts? You need to think and reflect on the love of God. And John chapter 14 verse one says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. I hope what I've shared tonight has blessed you. How do you deal with anxious thoughts? By trusting in God, by putting your trust in God and knowing that whatever the case may be, no matter what you go through, you know, instead of being worried or afraid, be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and choose to trust God and know that God loves you so much, he will never abandon you. I hope what I've shared tonight has blessed you. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. If you've never invited Jesus into your life, into your heart, you can invite him into your heart tonight. Would you like to receive the greatest gift ever? If you'd like to receive him, I'll lead you into a simple prayer. All you have to do is just believe it, and say after me. Say, Lord, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord, and I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. And tonight I receive the precious gift of eternal life. I receive the gift of life, and I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good night. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel.